This is The Party with Serene and Pearl. Get it right, P-O-D-D-Y. Ready to keep it sane. It's the Trim Healthy Podcast. And welcome, peeps. Um, before we started rolling, um, <laughs> Serene Dion did Stop it. the greatest impression of Celine Dion. Do you know, and then not. she asked... Then she was trying to come up with the name oh, of a certain singer. No, that she was said, captured. That we she, saw it. Is this? Is that? Did we start with it? They I just saw the meatloaf moment. I know, but I don't know if John was recording the we audio. John, were we? Oh, okay, I'm not sure <laughs> if they're going to leave it in. Cut. Can we get someone else? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, if you didn't see it, I'm going to repeat the joke. <laughs> no, they saw they it. For it sure wasn't saw even it. funny. It's, it's documented. Only funny. It's only funny when I say it. It was said oh, in okay. 4K. Okay, let's go. Keep going. I think that we're done it? here. That was your I, I think we're actually done. <laughs> okay. Well, great. Well, actually. No, but we didn't get to the point. And that was that you have the most amazing Celine Dion impression. No, I do not. And she I actually feel like doesn't. My, she looks like her yes. in a way, but she doesn't necessarily sing like no, her. I don't but what like you just you. did before we hit record really moved me, is what I'm saying. No, you just want to embarrass me. Listen, we have. We have something to bring today. We actually right. don't have meat to bring. It's your Oftentimes podcast. we have meat, but we thought that it's been enough of the barbecue. You know, oh. we want to bring some questions, answer some questions. Nice. So many questions get sent in and we don't really get to cover them all. And so we thought it was important to just take a bunch of the questions and um, just answer them here. But one really stood out to me. And, well, there was actually a bunch that were on the same subject, but one woman in particular, and I'm not going to say her name, but uh, she, you know, she was like, how do you stay on plan when life just gets beyond crazy? When it's not just like, oh, your mother-in-law is coming to visit, but your life is in a season of chaos and turmoil because, you know, special needs children. Maybe you don't even get but two hours sleep a night and, and your life just feels like it's a never ending roller coaster. How do you maintain a healthy diet? How do you maintain focus she was like, Serena Pearl, tell me how. How do I, I just want to, you know, throw me a lifeline so I can reach some kind of homeostasis in this roller coaster that I don't see an end to. And so um, it really touched my heart because I haven't been in a situation like her, but I have been in some pretty tough situations. And you were telling me, Serena, that her situation was very, very intense with a child with um, a sickness that um, was kind of round the clock that she has to attend to. And Do you know what it was? Very little sleep. No, but I think uh, involving involving seizures and involving very, very harmful things that can happen to the child. And I just think oh, their whole family's life is turned upside down and they don't see a, a foreseeable end right now. Right. Um, and so, you know, I haven't been in that situation by any means, but just have been in some pretty tough situations where you think, oh, okay, now's not the time to concentrate on on my health or, or you know, healthy recipes or fitting any, any exercise. You know, this is not the season. Um, but I found actually that my sanity, besides from God, in that season was being anchored around healthy habits, even when you thought, I can't even maintain habits. But there, there can be a way. We want to talk about that today. Yeah. And, um, you know, some of those situations, of course, was when, you know, for new people that are listening to the potty now, a lot of you already know that um, my eldest son battled cancer for about six years. And um, there was times when he was in the hospital at the same time when another one of my sons um, was a few flights above in Vanderbilt in the um, trauma ward because he had a head-on collision and they didn't know he'd ever come out of a coma. So I was visiting one in the trauma and ward. The, and one and in the then, critical ward because your son, Arden, who you know had cancer at the time, but he was stage four at the time. So it was very touch and go whether he'd live. And it, then at the same time, I had a, a, the, the baby I had at the time, um, he couldn't just eat or drink because he as he aspirated on everything so every what does that mean aspirated you know you couldn't even give him a teaspoon of water because he would just like choke it would go down mm. the wrong i don't know exactly but he would just yeah uh, uh, struggle like, to like yeah. swallow and he yeah. couldn't swallow normally he couldn't <clears throat> so all the food had to be blended to a certain consistency and all the I didn't know this. water um and all the drinks had to be fed through this little tiny tube thing yeah that's remy and um so this was all going on at the same time and, and i've i've actually always thought about asking i always forget but to ask you about that's interesting we're doing this like how because food and stress is such a intertwined thing right. and i've never asked you about like 
what'd you do for food? Did it affect your digestion? Is that what you're going to talk about? Well, we're just going to talk about the fact that it is possible to maintain some kind of healthy uh, anchor. And and I think, Serene, not only possible, but crucial. Yes. Because during this time when we think, sometimes our natural instincts, I found this in my own life, my natural instinct, our natural instincts are sometimes the most harmful ones for us. Like there's a higher way, but sometimes we go, you know, there's part of ourselves as, as, as humans, as, you know, beings on this planet that kind of have, we, I don't want to call it an animal instinct, but we have these things primal. called primal, primal. Some of them are fear, mm. some of them anxiety. They're very strong and yeah. we feel ourselves go into them when sometimes they're not the best for us, you know. I always go the low path. Caffeine-free like, you know, Diet Coke oh, you know, every other day. The things that feel easiest, that's a path to go down right now. That's where it feels yeah. I should just should go. Mm-hmm. But really, in, in reality, it's actually not the wisdom path for us. There's a higher one. And I've seen this in, even in my marriage. You know, sometimes if I get offended, my straightaway reaction, my natural reaction is just like close down or retaliate, either of those two. Like passive aggressive silent treatment or lash out and like, how could you? Without the higher way, right? Is to try to understand, maybe to talk it out and say, hey, what you did really hurt me, but without accusatory tone, right? Yeah. Uh, but there's something in us that goes this other path. And I've realized there's another path always that's wiser, that's higher. Yeah. You know, it's God's path for us. And we think it's going to be harder, but it's actually it's, easier. It's better. Yes. And so I think, you know, sometimes when we go through extremely, extremely challenging situations in life, our natural way is to think this is not the time to concentrate on my health. That will be for another day. And what I think Serene and I are both going to bring, but Serene's going to bring it from firsthand experience is actually, this is the time. Yeah. This is the crucial time. You don't have to get obsessive about it. You're going to do it so quickly, so easily. But baby, it's the time. I feel like food is like the last thing. And that's I what can we think. Deal right? With right. When and I'm people think out. that. They think, okay, I cannot put one more bit of stress, bit of yeah. pressure on my Or decision making. Yeah. Right. That's exactly. what it is for me. I'm like, I can't make any decisions today. Not Therefore, think about I'm not food. eating. I shall not think right. about food. That is the one yeah. last thing I don't need to do. And right I'm not now, coming yeah? at all with my little story and saying, you know, I've been through the valley, you know, <laughs> so I know the people have been in way harsher and harder situations than mine. But all all that I learned from mine is I just remember having a thought and it was like, okay, like it feels like both of my sons are dying, you know, and I have this, so it was three sons actually. And then there was the the little one who, you know, it wasn't just like you could throw them a crust, (laughs) peanut butter jelly sandwich and say, here, you know, be happy. No, it was like everything took extra time. Everything took extra thought. And there was a lot of stress involved if he was going to choke. I mean, we couldn't even train him properly as a yeah. child. Like, don't do that. Because you know, if he'd get too upset, He'd he choke. would choke on his own spit, you know. So anyway, all that, I remember thinking, do you know what would make this whole thing worse? <laughs> Me being sick. Oh, God. And it was just this clarity that was like, okay, so that would actually make the whole thing harder if I just chose to let stress take me down, to let unhealthy food choices take me down. So now's the time I'm pulling up my big girl socks. I'm actually going to think that it's going to be harder, but this is going to be the thing that's going to make, make me have enough energy to do this, you know? And so I remember thinking, okay, that's it. I'm going to be more strict than I've ever been. But what do you mean by strict? And it wasn't that it was more complicated, but meaning... I'm not going to miss a meal. Like sometimes okay. I'll be like, oh, I'm running over to Pearls. It's and missing a meal is huge when you're in stress, right? right? Yeah. Like it's lunchtime, but I got to go and, and we're going to do this meeting. And, and that was okay, you know, just to be a couple of hours late for a meal. But I remember thinking, no, it's going to be clockwork. I need nutrition. I need nourishment. And so everything went in the blender. That was what how I did it. Because a lot of times I was going to be out of the house running up to Vanderbilt in the hospital. So I had this little, what I call my doctor's bag. And I've lost it. It makes yeah. me so sad. But I remember that had doctor's bag. You carried it around. Yes. Did all this make it easier or harder for you? Easier. And that's my point. The, my point is, is people think, oh, I can't do health because I'm going through this hard season, you know, and maybe it's not even like with sickness in the family. Maybe it's like my, my husband, he just lost his job and, you know, it's just, we're, and we're moving right now and everything. And it's just so hard and so uh, extra hard will be trying to be healthy at this time. And that's the myth that I'm trying to dispel here today. And that is it's actually easier 
when you are focused on health in those times. It's actually easier. And so I think when you uncomplicate it, when you un- because yeah. you have to be vigilant about making things yeah. so simple you, you at know the what? time. I will say that when I'm like, I do best on like protein in the form of meat, mm-hmm. vegetables, perfect carb, right? Yeah. Like that's just yeah. like ah. healthy fats thrown in for you, eh? Yeah, whatever. Like, yeah, we're going to butter that potato. Yes. Yes. And salt it with THM mineral mm-hmm. salt. Sold now at store.trimhealthymama.com. <laughs> but I, f- I feel so much more like less depressed, more clear mm-hmm. if I do it, but I'm not saying I do. Yeah. I'm just saying in the rare times that I have, it does make other th- everything else feel a lot, a lot right. better. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, when everything is going haywire, we think worry is going to be the best yes. thing I can do right now. I always think I just don't have time to eat. Yeah. I got to fix and solve. That's where right. I'm always at. And I'm but have you crashing. been in a situation like that, Dan, where it's just like, okay, finances or whatever it is, everything just feels a bit tough and you're like, I'm going to add worry to this. It's going to yeah, help. It's going to help me. I do it all 100%. the time. I have yeah. to full-time worry. Yeah. And I'm going to pick I don't, a fight my with life someone. will fall apart. But guess yeah. what? No, I, have cha- I say I do that all the time like I'm not a changed person. No, I am. What I used to do was worry without observing the worry. It was yeah. so knee-jerk. That's just what you did, right? Yeah. You hear something that's challenging, you know, about family, life, or, uh, or, or work or whatever, and you're like, now the worry kicks. It's just what it does. It's right. knee-jerk. Then I learned to observe myself doing that. I was like, oh, you're worrying, right? So let's not do that. There's a better path. There's a better path. You know, your homepage of peace. So I learned to go into peace. Now I'm at the stage where I hear information or I'm faced with something, and I always get to this crossroads. I understand. Like before it was always knee-jerk worry. Now I see two pathways. And sometimes, many times, I take the pa- the peace pathway. I'm still baby-stepping sometimes. I take yeah. that worry because so knee-jerk to the human experience, right? But I think we get better and better about taking the higher way. Yeah? You know how I love talking about Graham Cook? He's my, my, yeah. one of my favorite speakers of all time. And he, I just recently listened to one of his messages and he was like, I love self-control. Every, everybody thinks self-control is one of those fruits of the spirit. Like, like it's not like love or joy or peace. <laughs> it's like self-control. Like that's so, what a pain that yeah. is. You know, that must be like, or like hard striving and everything. He's like, no, I realize self-control is such a gift. It's such a gift to me because self-control is that little place I go into that gives me like a pause, like a rem- like on the TV. Yeah. You know, we can just press pause when everything's going crazy and have a little think about it. He's like, it's my delightful place. Ooh. Self-control is this little place I go into and I'm like, thank you, Lord, for self-control. I can just come inside for a while, pause everything, and have a think about how I'm going to go from here. <laughs> I love that. What a new way to look I at it. I love it. And so it makes me think, Chill, Pearl, it was always your knee jerk. Yeah. Or it was like the way that we think is, is going to be easier. So we just rush in. But if we can just pause for a little bit, press the remote and just say, let's have a little self-control for a while. You know, come inside and have a think about this. Okay, so my life is cray cray. I've got these special needs in my family. I'm getting hardly any sleep at night. Uh, I mean, the cortisol must mm. be worrying, mm. huh, maybe this is the best time for healthy eating. And like Pearl said, you know, um, it has to be simplified. And so what I did was chucked everything in the blender. I had my little doctor's bag and a little ice pack that went in when there. When you say doctor's bag, it's not a doctor's bag. No. It looked like it was a yeah. black bag and it was like <laughs> It wasn't one of those pretty things that and you take to work. And it was insulated. Right. And so… And Serena, We're talking about a cheap cooler. Yes, yes. but it was like okay. the Small ugliest, cooler. cheapest okay. from like okay. the Amazon that didn't sell and it got sent to one of those give me us five stores, you <laughs> yeah. know, when I got it for 50 yeah. cents. But I want to talk, you were going to talk about what you did to keep things simple. Then I, I want us to talk about if people aren't into smoothies or whatever. Yeah, exactly. Are there so simple things you can do when life is challenged? So we're going to get really practical, but Serene, talk about what you did and get into details, please. Yes, but, I, but it's not like I love smoothies. No. I have actually grown to respect smoothie. Okay. Because <laughs> okay. Pearl's like, I just love to chew, so why do you always have a smoothie? But I'd rather be respected than love. But but <laughs> smoothies, I have realized, are my superpower. Yeah. yeah. Because I'm often how times, even though I'm not in that cray cray season that I was describing, I'm still busy and having to get mm. out of the house or I don't have time to chew because yeah. I'm having to go to a meeting or a pot. You see me at this podcast. I've always got my little yak yum smoothie. Who has time to chew? Right? It's superpower because I, I didn't have time to chew before I, I got see. there. Now I'm at the potty. I need to be having lunch. So I just sip it down, right? And so everything went into that, into that blender. 
And Can we talk about people are listening? I know what they're thinking right now. String, tell me what went into the blender. Okay. Tell me for breakfast. Oh, I think they're thinking. For lunch, okay, well, that's where the yuck yum was birthed. Okay. Okay. And I call it the yuck yum because I threw everything as yuck as I could possibly think of in there because I thought, my life is cray cray. I need ashwagandha. Yeah. <laughs> like a- an adaptogen herb. Oh boy, I need like the good the good bugs. I need the kefir. I need horny the protein. Yeah. What is she didn't there? need That's the horny goat weed. That's a male sexual stimulant. <laughs> oh, no, it is. Yeah. And you was, know, and you know. <laughs> no, I didn't. Yeah, it's in your no, cupboard at home. No, we know that. <laughs> the word I think the the first word yeah. makes you think that, but I always thought to myself, no, it is. it's definitely not that it is. because it's at gas stations. No, it is. <laughs> so I thought it was more like energy. It's at gas stations, stations Danny. It exactly, is. right. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so I would think, okay, so I need my protein. So I always like had it a, with a base of protein. It was so, always so kefir. The, kefir. Because Thank good you. bugs is also, yeah. good bugs helps you with stress. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, because cortisol wreaks havoc on your gut. Yeah. So Serene, during that time of stress, and I remember it because I remember that time of your life because, you know, I'm close to your children too. And it was heartbreaking for even me, let alone you. Um, you, your gut health didn't go down at the time I think it even went up yes right because that's when your yuck yum was born yeah, that's when the yuck that's, born. you'd done kefir before that I mean you've yeah. been a kefir girl for years but that's when you really focused down that's into when it. it became an integral part of my day yes it was like there shall be a yuck yum yeah at 12 yeah <laughs> a court of yuck yum so anyway I based it around kefir and, and for me it was like home done because that was just easy for me I had a farm down the road that had milk mm. Buy the Jolly Milk at the store if that's mm. what simplifies your life yeah. because it's not even dairy in the end. Yeah. You're changing that lactose into lactic acid. It's a whole different food at that point. You fermented the heck out of it and it's delicious. And then I'll be like, oh, I need like micronutrients from the berries. I'd chuck the raspberries in there and the blackberries. And what else do I need? I need some good fat. Sometimes a half an avocado yeah. would go in there. I was at goal weight, so I didn't care about keeping it a particular fuel like mm-hmm. E or S. It was just crossover. I'd shove stuff in there. What else would I shove in? Pearl chia seeds. Mm-hmm. I would shove in some maybe some. You would do the uh, the the oh macker. I'd throw in macker too. What was it? What's the, what that vitamin in. C powder? A uh, uh, ro- uh, oh, uh, camu uh, camu camu camu. Throw in yeah. camu camu. All the powders. Yeah, all the powders. I remember that would be different every day. I'd throw in turmeric. I'd throw everything. Anti-inflammatory stuff. Whiz it up. Stick it in my doctor's bag. Chuck some carrots in there. Throw a handful of almonds. Sometimes I wouldn't even zippy them up. Just chuck. You know <laughs> what else? Was, what is, <laughs> else was in my fridge? What else in there? Cucumber. Chuck. Wouldn't even cut it up. It goes with me to the hospital and I eat all day. I eat on it and I didn't miss a meal and I everything was anchored around protein and I had nutrients. I didn't have to like go like all stressed. But what about when you would come home for like sometimes you would get to come home in the evenings, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that is also when your trimmy bisques were born, right? Your huge pots of soup that would last, make huge amounts. I would like have a cauldron (laughs) this big and I would make the trimmy bisque for the week. For yeah. the family for the week, not yeah. just me. So it was like big, and humongous. That and that would just, I, sh- I got a particular refrigerator that would house the pot because <laughs> I'm like, it's going to be stressed to put this into a bunch of little zippies and a bunch of little Tupperwares. So once the, the soup was cooked and cooled, I shoved it into the fridge, the whole big pot, and people would just reheat whatever they wanted. Yeah, but. so now I, I think we've got two meals kind of done. I remember you, always your yuck yum at lunch, always your big soup at night, right? Yeah. And then you had nuts and vegetables to snack on throughout the day. So simple, in okay? In the morning it was eggs or oatmeal. Yeah, okay, every, so every eggs morning. or oatmeal. So your I life… I chucked veggies in Your my, life was uh, simple. Eggs. You remained healthy. Did you love your food? I loved my food, but at the time I even didn't even care. You didn't care. Because like I said, it wasn't my love of smoothies that made me do that. It was my respect of them. It was like, okay, I have to I have to bring my game. I can't get sick. If I get sick, then I can't help my family. Yeah. And also, wouldn't that be like depressing hmm. to like add like 15 pounds onto this year yeah. and, and or, say or that Or wreck your blood like, sugar or pull down right. your immune that system. That is so spot on. Right. And like, w- should I just like pull myself down because all of this stuff feels spiraling out of control? Should I spiral out of control too? So. I think it's so good, Serene. I want to take it from you, who's more like a purist, and go to someone else who might be in a similar situation. And, and we've had her on the podcast. You know, Nadia yes, yes. came on this podcast and shared her story. It is cold. Yeah, yeah. it's like the the Nordic winds doth Nord- blow. <laughs> yeah, it's freezing right on us. It's my next I need book. a Ricola. <laughs> you need a what? A, a Ricola. Ricola. 
Ricola. Well, the Nordic winds just made, made me want to do the yodel. You know, you've seen the Ricola ad. Is that the yeah. one that the? Yes, that was back when you used to watch TV in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, Ricola when Ricola wasn't. When hamburger sung. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. So okay, we've so actually touched on all of this before. I've told about my story. I've told about my doctor bed, and we've not about, like told this. about Nadia before too. But not it's important. Like, and I said to Pearl on the phone, I'm like, I want to address this, this question, but guess what? We've addressed it a million times. But Pearl's like, the point is not crispy enough. Yeah, it's not crispy enough. You got enough. crisp points, and I'm telling you, as humans, we need reminders. Crisp. The I point. need reminders mm-hmm. every single day. Like, what kind of blender you use? Sorry, I, I just I've been wondering. To- can I interrupt just there for one no, second? No, you go I'm ahead. finishing my point, <laughs> Danny and Serene. I just will put a pin. I need to know the blender. Okay. And what model. I need reminders every every single day to choose life in my thoughts and my words in my choices. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to this animalistic part of my of yeah. my of my body, whatever you call primal. it, right? Primal that wants to run and hide or retaliate and do all the things that animals just do. sabotage your whole just, life. Yes, that's what. So I think yeah. when we remind ourselves, it's good. So we're going to crisp this point, baby. Yes. Crisp it. Let's get Go the crisper to, oh, out. First of all, blender. Please don't think you have to have a Vitamix. I think you. But do. you do. No, I have a Vitamix. I think yeah, you do. But, yeah, but. But what I'm saying is, I don't have one. But somebody I think whose I need life one. spiral out of, out of control. The last thing they have to think of, think of is it's a five hundred. Well, I can't purchase. do this. Yeah. What she's talking about because I don't have the Vitamix. Yeah. No, I went to Walmart. I have a Vitamix, but to me that was too much time because that means I'd have to wash the Vitamix. Don't yeah. talk about the so, ninja. So you see, everything went into the court, okay. right? Okay. The court jar, and I just stick a lid on top. So I just got a handheld blender. Yeah. <laughs> That's not gonna work. Yes, I did because I had to wash the blender. No, she no, the put- carrots went into the eat. doctor's bag, darling. Okay, carrots. Aren't- I thought you were. I didn't even them peel them. Blender. I didn't even de end them. I just chucked okay, them. Okay, the let's bag. revisit that to- topic. When she was throwing in carrots and cucumbers, they were into the doctor's bag and we the won't. nuts. They weren't into the smoothie. This was a supplemental item. This was like I needed to fill my doctor's bag up. With food for the day. Yes. So she, let's let's clarify, all the powders were going in the smoothie with the kefir. Okay. And all of that. The berries. The berries and the greens. Yeah. Maybe okay. an avocado. The blendables. The nuts and the veggies and maybe a piece of fruit or two, they were just being thrown in the doctor's bag. Got it? But I do did do handfuls Uncada? of spinach and handfuls of like lettuce and stuff in like that. In the smoothie. I did do that in the smoothie. And they a handheld be- blender would handle that? Yes. Okay. Oh, I, yeah. I don't think that's optimal. I don't think the handheld bender would like do a frozen banana. Yes, it will. Will it? I, don't. I can make a kind handheld, handheld blender. blender. Serene can, can make things chainsaw. do things. I'm here. telling you what, the last thing you want to do is wash a blender or have like fruit flies swimming in it when you get back <laughs> and from, from where you ever, you've oh, been, like from your cray cray life. Yes. She's saying if you don't have money for a $500 blender, buy a $16 okay. handheld Since blender. No one's Walmart. getting yeah. a blend, handheld blender. I've got one. Is there an alternative to. But but you can't replace listen, a blender. Ha- listen, listen. I would rather have a handheld blender than those other things that aren't Vitamix or, or Blendtec or whatever like that. Oh, that's because what I'm saying. Because I broke yeah. one every two weeks. That's what I used but to. But that hand blend- blender, I don't. I don't have a Vitamix. I have a Blendtec. You ever caught I one on fire? Yeah, I said Blendtec. I love Blendtec. Those are the big tops, right? You ever mm-hmm. caught it on fire? Oh, no, no. I caught a blender on fire. It, yeah, but every other blender. Why are you calling I'm, Daddy? Okay, she calls her children darling when she's instructing them. And right now she's calling you darling. She's not happy times. with Did my. Did I tell you yeah, again? Two times. She's not happy with my resistance no, to the handheld not. blender. She is telling you what for, and that's why she's, she's using the word me darling. She's giving the what for. He's got pink glasses. He, he, the darling this is the, This is messing with you today. Yeah. Can I go now and talk about Please. maybe um, Nadia, Nadia? Because I want to bring maybe more of a drive through Sue person who's yeah. in a a very, um, you know, a state of trial, a state of, I don't have time for this. And I know many of you listen to, to her uh, podcast here, but you if know you what? didn't. That podcast, that rocked. I know. Because yeah, it met a lot good. of people where they were. And yeah. we had actually uh, somebody message us on our Treasure Hunters group, our private group. Mm-hmm. It's about to go public. It's public. not public yet. You can't no, find it No, yet. you can't find it. But anyway, and they're like, if Nadia can do it, I can do it. Yeah. And I tell you, that's such a true statement. Yeah. Because um, if you haven't listened to um, the potty about Nadia. Well, I was what about to explain it and well, you sort of took over ahead, it once yeah. again, but uh, let me try. Wow. Um, so Nadia, and I was that was the potty I was going for, but I listened to it and I cried Did through I it. Did do well without you? You did amazing. I was so proud of you. I was proud of you too, Denny. Um, it was an incredible potty. She shared about her life right now where um, she is not – even then not a cook. She hates she hates to think about food. Um, she hates to do all that. It's not part of her, you know, part of her thing in life. She's just kind of more of a, 
uh, likes to get stuff done outside of the kitchen, right? But she was in a very serious time with her own health. And at the same time, her daughter had cancer, had to be in um, Vanderbilt for many, many, many treatments. Can I paint the picture properly? Yeah, go ahead. This woman um, is a mother of seven. Yeah. And her husband recently left her. Yeah. And so she has seven children. She's a single mother. Basically, she didn't have a, a job. Um, her husband left her, so she has no income. She is the, she's stranded. And you'd think, okay, she could go get a job and get a life. But then that's she way has, harder than it. She has yeah. a, her youngest, which was three, four, three, three time, when diagnosed, almost, four yeah. when she was still in treatment. Um, yeah. And just turned five now. Um, diagnosed with uh, neuroblastoma, such and such cancer, One like the ones fourth you don't stage. Want to you don't hear. find out yeah. till it's fourth stage. But that was on top of Clove syndrome. She was born with Clove syndrome, which is one of the rarest genetic mm. conditions. Um, and I didn't even know anything about it. I had to look yeah. it up. But this girl is the most beautiful soul. She's, so She's the sweetest, most incredible little girl. She's a fighter. Anyway, but then on top of Clove syndrome, she gets this fourth stage cancer. And it's desperate. They, they had to, I think it was like, ambulance her from the pediatric yeah. appointment where they went and took her in. So it was like Nadia, she couldn't even drive her. That was like that. What desperate. we're saying is, is Nadia couldn't work full time. She had to be with her daughter. And, There's no one else. And it was massive times in the hospital. It wasn't just yeah. like, oh, go for a little appointment and come home. No, it was like, you know, months on end with the stem so, cell treatment. You know, to bring radiation. it around, Serene and Sam had a tiny little place on their on their property that they all moved into. This one bedroom little place. I mean, the and six hundred square feet. Yes, Nadia then, and the kids. Yeah, seven, live, the seven of the seven right, children and her eight right of them. there, but they love it because all the children play. And you know, Nadia's getting on her feet, and and now oh, she, she works. She works full time. She's incredible. Actually, but she let, works even when she goes to the hospital. Let me talk about about what she did. I know she explained it here, but I've got a little more of a side thing to bring about Nadia. You know, because she talked to me a lot too about, you know, starting. I was so frustrated with Nadia because not only did she, we did love she you, come Nadia. to me. <laughs> no, I love her now. She, I, I loved her then too, but I was frustrated with her because she'd come to me and kind of ask. She was having health issues at the time. She'd kind of ask about Trim Healthy Mama. She'd ask and then I'd start talking and she would just look around the room like, Kind of listening, but kind of not. Well, she did that to me. So that's why I had the big fight in my yard. Yeah, yeah you guys fought it out. And I yeah. said to Serena, I was like, Serena, after our talks, I'm like, she wants to know, but she sure, certainly doesn't want to know. I said to her, <laughs> I, this is what I said. If I didn't make it clear in the last podcast, I'll say here again. I said, Nadia, you're one of those most smartest women. She is. She's She could like run the whole nation. Yeah. She's like one of those nation changers. I'm like, you could do anything you wanted to do. Like you are such a capable woman, but when it comes to health, as soon as you ask about it and I start talking about it, <laughs> the curtains close. I see them pull. But, and really what you're saying is you do it for me. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not. That's what she wanted. In, but but some many of us are like that when we first start something, right? But in the end, her health became such a, a big deal. She had to address it and she did. And she does it for herself now. But I want to talk no, about she had to. She did it for herself too because she had to stay healthy for the rest of the children. Well, she, that's what her health became such an issue. She couldn't function as a mother to look after. She couldn't all that even she function at the do. hospital to look after her her youngest because it was like it was like twenty four. You don't sleep. It was. But here yeah. the thing, and, the, and her simplicity has been very different from yours, Serene. Yes. So she found out the most basic, most simple things she could do. It involved one afternoon of prep, and that's all it was. She came across our trim healthy pancake recipe. It's three ingredients: it's cottage cheese, it's egg whites, and it's oats. I mean, basically, you put a little sweetener in there if you want. So but you she's don't kept even need it to. all the way to the plan. She does yes. E and S. She keeps it like very strict because she did have weight to lose. Yes, but, Danny, yes, Danny, darling. You said for the pancake recipe, yeah. cottage cheese. Cottage cheese, egg white. One cup egg whites, egg one cup whites. cottage cheese, one cup oats. You whiz it together. And then our own plan sweetener. Do you yeah. put any like baking yeah, soda? Yeah, there's, there, no, there's a bit of baking powder. How does that powder. equal a pancake? Oh, well, well, you blend you it up freak. and they make the most fluffiest, That's when you can use most your wonderful pancakes. Plan. So she wow. started making these and they became her breakfast that she, she'd make them once on a Sunday, her and her children, and make piles of them. And so they were there all week. Not only can you have them for breakfast, I mean, she found out she can use them as sandwiches for lunch. I mean, you, there are so many different things you could do. But so the other day, she, you know, she attends Hilltop Church. She said, oh, bro, I've got to go to the hospital this week. She was having all these challenges. She's like, and I'm out of egg whites. I don't know what to do without my pancakes. So, like, she came to my house and I gave her some egg whites because 
Her life is so intense that if she doesn't have these pancakes for breakfast, she basically can't function. What if the yellow gets in? No, it's all right, mate. Bit rude? Oh, it's fine. You could do full eggs. If yeah, you, you can do it. I'm concerned I'm going to have to strain eggs. No, we no. buy the carton egg weights. No, you, you're going to be doing the... Oh. No, but he's going to be doing the whole egg because he yeah, wants to gain Yeah, she weight. does these for E. They're an E. They're, they're a okay. weight loss for her. Okay. Yeah, Got you it. could do full eggs. And I don't want a downer when I said she said she she wanted us to do it for her. She, she didn't because she is such a hardworking person. It's just that it was a mentality hmm. of like, it's too. I've got too much on my plate. I can't even... Add one more thing. But what she has learned is this particular aspect has actually given back more energy than it takes. Oh, yes. Way Absolutely. more energy than it takes. And she keeps losing before our eyes. Yeah. Like she's like. She's never felt better. But anyway, so so her breakfast is always pancakes. On the days that she doesn't have me, she'll quickly whip up some oatmeal. But she's found out that good carbs with protein helps her. Right. It gets her. And she so, found out that the worst thing for her stress was skipping meals. Worst The thing. worst. She was the hugest meal skipper, Danny. If your life is hectic, we want to encourage you. If your life is hectic, the worst thing you could do is skip meals. And it was brutal on her weight, yes. the skipping meals, because it raised up her cortisol, and especially women. When and you lowered have, her leptin. When you have elevated cortisol, especially through a stressful time in life, your cortisol, cortisol is already elevated. When mm. you skip a meal, it is intensified. Do you know what brings cortisol down for women? Breakfast. Breakfast, especially with a, a protein and a healthy carb. Mm -hmm. That's what brings it down. Which the opposite is what most people think. That, yeah. Because opposite. what about intermittent fasting? Everyone's skipping breakfast. Yeah, oh, that's and, a and, whole and they've done party. studies and I've got them in my book mm -hmm. showing what happens to women, specifically women, when they skip breakfast and they tested their cortisol all day. And it literally will not come down until evening. But the woman that had a breakfast and included a carb and a healthy protein, the cortisol just it just went down to perfectly baseline. Is the same true for men? It's, I don't know. I haven't seen the studies. This for is men. what this is what I've heard, and 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 some of the research says I don't believe it's totally optimal for either of the genders, but it's way worse for women it is. because women yeah. don't harsh things are are more harsh on them. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you we know. have totally different, even our hyperhippocampus. Hip yeah. Uh, we have things. It, there are, I mean, I've got all this information in my book, but we have. Um, wing it, Pearl, wing it. We bring have it, bring uh, it. Uh, two um, sensors to um, food deprivation. Men have one. Really? We have double. Yes. And so that's why fasting hits us in a much, much more brutal way. Yeah. yeah. And because the, the body has like. It's, it's double the effect of, oh, my goodness, you're not going to get food. Well, I'm going to start storing. I'm going to start rising your cortisol. Mm -hmm. You are here to procreate the species, girl. Right. Get some food in you. And, okay. and, and your cortisol r rises and then your leptin yeah. tanks. Yeah. And when your leptin tanks, your body says, I am going to change this whole endocrine system into survival mode. And so the metabolism screeches to a halt. And it's basically like I have to hang on to every calorie because I'm in survival mode. Yeah. But getting back to, I know we're conversation style, but I want to get okay. back to the other things Her that she eats. Practical. practical. Sweet potatoes. She loves them. She batch cooks them. Yeah. And then she'll she, just reheat them, which is great for resistant starch. Yeah. So that would, so cool. that she had two lunches as far as I know. And, and, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, Nadia. I know you're going to listen to this and we're talking all about you. But I remember her one lunch is so simple and she's, she does it to this day. Greek yogurt. Stevia sweetened chocolate that was her chips dinner. and berries. That was her dinner. Okay, that was her dinner. And she wasn't small size either. It was… Big bowl of Greek yogurt, shove a big amount of berries on top, a little bit of coconut, chips. a little bit of dark Co chocolate So that was chips. kind of like an S. Yeah. Okay. And then her other one was she always batch cooked Tuna. protein yes. for either the dinner or the lunch with a sweet potato or a salad. Right. So she could have an S or an E. And that was it i'm telling you there was nothing else right and she and now was like four or five meals she just kept repeating and and she just loves them and and you don't need variety when you're in survival mode right you just need to survive and then the other thing when she, so she batch cooks everything with her children and um so basically she doesn't have to think for the week yeah they just one afternoon they all help they batch because there's no time there's for no thinking. time and then she sent me a picture the other day she goes serene what have i turned into I, I never thought I'd be this way. And she sent me a picture of her in the hospital room because she has to go. It's still um, their little daughter's in treatment and she has to go um, for a whole week every three weeks. And anyway, she's got her blender in there 
and all her all her powders and she has her kefir fermenting that she brings to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, she started with kefir later, but she didn't start with it, but now she does kefir mm-hmm. too because it's just easy. You know, yeah. I think so many people think kefir is like for purists who have a lot of time. Kefir makes things so much easier and quicker. We take you kefir know on the, uh, through you, our suitcase in the plane. You can take it cross country. Well, you it, it simplifies your life. Tough. If you're a trim healthy mama, you know what your one meal, you know that one of your meals through that day is going to be a kefir based meal. And I don't like smoothies. As Serene said, I don't like chewing my meal. I make, I make kefir bowls. So I use a spoon. So I put stuff in it. I don't want to drink it. I, it doesn't even matter if it's still runny. I want to spoon it. Just kefir or you don't no, like chewing? No, I put sho- stuff. Sho- she shoves all these super foody things that crunch. Yeah, I like crunch or I like put, you know, like toasted oats on there. But you there. said you don't like chewing your meal. No, I love chewing my meal. I don't like oh. drinking my meal. It's like that's such a weird like phobia. Uh, no, I want to chew. Okay. I want to chew. Like, it doesn't feel like I've eaten. If I like, just eat a smooth, drink a smoothie. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I, but for people that think they don't have time. Yeah. Shove it and just respect it. Respect the smoothie. Yeah. I like that. That maybe should be the name of this podcast. Respect the smoothie. Respect beats love. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if love. you're thinking, oh, healthy is going to take so much time and I'm going to have to, um, like, rotate certain uh, different um, recipes mm. and I'm going to have to make all those sippers, those girls say, yeah. and I'm going to have to make all these kind of, like, treats and then – I really going to have to dabble in the in the cheesecakes and the mm. and the desserts because I don't want to get tempted on the bad stuff. No, you just you just don't do any of you that. Have, you just uh, keep you have you have 85% dark chocolate for your sweet That's needs it. and don't worry about anything else. Here's the things not to do when you're in an extreme stressful stressful situation. Here's what not to do. Um, don't try and make a two-week menu plan. Forget no. all that. Forget about trying stuff from all the cookbooks. Don't go through the Chip and Joanna section no, at Target. No, don't. And Just keep it simple. And here's another thing not to do. Do not over-exercise. Yes. You can't. Do not. Because actually that can be more of a stressor. Yeah. Some people, you know, a, a good amount of exercise, if they're not too exhausted, takes care of stress. But relieve if, stress but if you're exhausted if and you're, you're not cortis- getting like yeah. enough sleep you can't take that energy and but put we're it not into talking about workout. walking walking no. is good no, for walking everybody. is really good because it, it actually is a you know a stress relief just walking if you can get a chance to just be by yourself or with other children or something and just take a half hour walk that will be brilliant but we're talking about training you can't during that yeah, time so i would say if you're in a season and you're getting like two to three hours sleep a night yeah, that's not four. your season to weight lift that yeah. is not okay. your season to get into resistance training. But, you know, people will be like, oh, it'd be great stress relief. No, it's too much. Yeah. It's too much. And so walking, fantastic. Stretching, fantastic. Mm-hmm. Moving, not being sedentary. Yes, 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 yes. Massage. Like all even those if you're at the things, hospital great. or and you're in an intense situation, you have to be there for multiple hours. Like Serena and I have to do meetings for hours mm-hmm. and hours or write books for hours and hours even now. You never say sitting for more than an hour. You gotta get up, maybe do a few air squats, maybe do a few, you know, leg raises. Nadia does or, air squats in the mm-hmm. hospital. She she's like she, she has a little little exercises she does in there and she goes for walks. Yeah. But now's not the season. I have not had an argument over the fence trying to get her to start weightlifting. No, it's not right. I now. want to hear not some more don'ts. Now. What don't we do? Yes, yeah, really yeah. don't. Um, I would think you know if you're in a season and you feel like you can't sleep properly, like have a good seven mm-hmm. hours in the night. I think that's not the season to stay up late on purpose. You know how you know how some people it's like oh it hits ten o'clock at night and that's when they start yeah. texting all their friends and that's I stay when up late, like, as that's an act when of rebellion. right well that's when it's just like their life all the, maybe a lot of their responsibilities <laughs> are over and yeah. they can just start to have their kind of downtime but I think if you're in a stressful season you can't afford to like not be in bed before like you need to be in bed around, when you can definitely around, when you can like so there's studies on sleep. Sleep is so important. It's just as important. It's just as important as food. Yeah. And so if you have, you know, an answer oh, to I, the I would lady like who, to say something about yes. that. May I? Um, no, about sleep. You cannot, okay, no, you, you go. Of course you can. can. Sleep. It's your podcast. I saw a study yesterday that sleep, uh, the lack of sleep, but I want to, I kind of want to preface this with another angle and too. I have to go to the party. Go. I'm going to, I'm going to speak. Go right in gone. the middle of the show. <laughs> what if I don't know what you said? No, gone, just, and I'm out of the, that's yeah, the price, I'm Serene. Oh, you Drop your tea. It's water based. <laughs> it's not the oil based tea you're used to. Sorry, sorry. Um, oh, bye, Amy. Oh, what's up? What's up, crew? Um, what were we talking about? Oh, I sleep. Okay. We were talking about sleep and how um, 
yeah, I saw a study yesterday that sleep, they found out that the lack of sleep is an actual carcinogen, yeah. meaning it promotes cancer. And um, if you don't have enough sleep, of course, your immune system down goes down. So, you know, your your cancer risk goes up. I do have to say, though, that I believe so much of our health is the way we think about our health and the way we train our body to think about our health and we tell ourselves, you know, ourselves and our body how to behave. I mean, that's science, right? So I think if you literally cannot get sleep and it's beyond your control and you're not just staying up late and being a bit of a fool about it, right? I believe that you can take that situation and say, this is a season of my life. I, no matter the challenges and, the, and they are hard, I'm going to thrive here. So this lack of sleep right now, you know what? It's actually good for me. I'm doing well. I was going to say the lack Welcome of sleep back, that I found out is a carcinogen, right? It promotes so many things. But if that is your only choice right now, you're up with a baby or you're up with yes. a child and it's season, I say no. Do not believe the studies. You oh. tell your body differently. Oh, no, exactly. And, and that's the greater truth. Well, let me actually just tell you about that. Okay, when it comes to nursing, let me tell you about that. Are you that. breaking yeah, yeah. the fourth wall? Yeah, she's looking in the camera. Let me tell you about that. <laughs> you kinda, did it before. I kind of feel like it's my thing. Yeah. Hey, listen, <laughs> listen let, let me just say this. They actually have done studies and that nursing mothers, Dan, you're a nursing mother. Listen. I'm, I'm talking to someone right now. <laughs> nursing mothers. The, the, I know that it's broken up a lot and they're up and they're, they're you know, aware, but the hours yeah. that they get sleep a way more REM, a way more um, rejuvenating. Restoring, yeah. They're way more restorative. They've yeah. done studies. It's Dr. Sears. There's a study coming from the Dr. Sears nighttime yeah. parenting book. And he was like, you know, a lot of women say, well, it's just such a hard season. I'm not getting that much sleep. Actually, the hours that you're getting are more restorative than other people's hours. And when nursing, you're nursing, nursing mothers. So be have... encouraged. And my point being is don't listen to your mind saying, oh, Over my health's going to go down because – like, you know, I'm not getting enough sleep. Actually, no, nursing mothers, that you actually, in that certain hours that <laughs> you're getting, like, Danny, you're no actually getting more restorative hours. Now, I agree. Like with the, if you can't get sleep at all, you're not a nursing mother and you really know that you're not getting any restorative sleep, just tell yourself that you're amazing. Well, no, I, I would say, <laughs> I would say, solution. I'll tell you why. I would tell say, you tell your body, yes, <laughs> these four hours of sleep I'm getting are more restorative than anyone and else on this planet. And you can pray into it. You may not be a believer listening to this podcast, but if you are, you can pray into it. Like, I don't get as many hours as I want to, to, to write, to do the things I want to, because I've still got so many children in, in the house, like business wise. I don't get as much time as I want to pour in. And so I always pray and I'm like, Lord, take this two hours and make it eight, <laughs> like make it more productive. And I almost like, there's a faith that goes into that. And then I believe, and I believe those two hours are more productive. That's and I believe counts, there's truth sister. to that. But I say that with the phone too. Like if I'm on the phone, lots of cell phones and I'm a purist, right? So that freaks me out. And I'm like, 5G, this is all like radiating my brains out, right? And I'm like, <laughs> When I have to use the phone, I'm like, this technology, I know it's doing something amazing for my body. <laughs> yeah. Like I bet yeah. they'll find out in 10 Stimulates years the... that this is doing something incredible. This is like a superfood machine that I've you know, got here. You know, I and I and I receive, I receive. But when I don't need to use it, Danny, I chuck four feet away and then it's from <laughs> the hell. It's from the devil. Well, and I need to pick up what you're doing because um, I, I'm always, I even wonder if like, because our body's like electromagnetic and I've yeah. even wondered like, it's uh, gonna get canceled i i even wonder like does does it like make me pick it up like does oh. it decide <laughs> it's instagram time because i'll tell you this i was on instagram one time and i was like i'm giving you 10 seconds and i'm belling you just give me a second i was like what am i doing here because i was just mindlessly yeah. there i closed the app okay i started doing something i looked back at my phone the app was open i was on instagram and i'm not saying it did it automatically i'm saying my thumb selected instagram yeah. without my consent well it's dopamine you know you need time to get back <laughs> on time the dopamine fix but here is what i would say on, no, but can on, i say yep, one more thing about sleep before you move on from sleep yes. or was it about sleep it was and about my sleep. search page okay. is not indicative of my values okay, okay, well you have last time and now it's my turn we got to go around the round the room because you were doing the big talk then danny then me oh, and now good. it'll be your turn after yes, me. yes we can do like you know yeah, but share, Chinese share. Oh, okay, John's saying hurry up. Okay, it'll be super quick. However, okay, this happened to me John, when I went through menopause. Don't tell them how to do their show. 
<laughs> First of we all, we do obey John. He's a, he's the producer of the party. He, do, he doesn't have a mic. I'm just taking advantage of non um, like just linear. I, I do think, to- like you say, when you can control something, Serene, then you do. When I went through menopause, I had a hot flash as I lost two years of sleep. Literally every wow. hour and a half, I was like hot flashing. Waking up. Yes, it was so bad. I was going on so little sleep because my body did not like not having hormones, you know. So then I restored my Me hormones. Too. And I sleep better than a child. I, I like. I think that's how I pulled my shoulder. I don't even know what I'm. My sleep is so deep. She doesn't know what wonky <laughs> position she gets into. And stays no, asleep but apart in. from oh, that, I'm yeah. having the most restorative sleep of my life because my hormones are so optimized. So I do think when you can control something, because the studies show, you know, lack of sleep gives rise to other diseases. Now, if you're only getting four, you pray over them. They're good. But if you can get more, you do something about it and you get those optimized sleep Because hours. women will like right. hormonally, I mean, maybe men too, people yeah. hormonally won't get sleep. Like you can't oh, sleep. You can't sleep your when you're hot good. flashing all night. Or it's an anxious feeling, the lack of progesterone. It wakes your body up. Or it's up. cortisol that's just surging oh, yeah. through your body. There's so yeah. many, the, the lack of those hormones do things And estrogen to a woman antagonizes body. cortisol. And, yeah. yeah. So, I mean... <sighs> Wow. But I do want to say, what if you can only get two hours? What if, and you're praying over, you're blessing those two hours, but there might be times in the day where you can try, even if your brain doesn't fully shut down, I think there's times where you could be like, if your child is snapping, then you nap too. Yes. Right? You and don't it's worry a about discipline. The dishes right? It's a point. discipline. Like, who cares about even no no dinner done? Just put it all in a smoothie and respect the smoothie and yeah. just get those bits of sleep. But so that was the point of the whole thing is just, um, it is you're, not. You're cris- crisping it up for Andy? Yeah. Okay. It's not something extra hard that you're going to put on yourself that's going to be like I, I, I need to treat myself gently right now and I'm just not going to do the do the trim healthy thing or you know any of that right now I'm just going to be gentle on myself I'm going to give myself a little grace this is a hard season no if you want to give yourself grace if you want to be truly gentle with yourself mm. put health as your anchor this is what you need at this time trim healthy mama my way